So what do we do if we find ourselves struggling with hostile voices or having to kind of wrestle with hostile voices in our heads? Um, I guess the first thing is stop and pause. So if you get some abusive material coming to your computer, um, don't react straight away, don't bite the hook, uh, press kind of metaphorical pause and maybe, you know, do something like take a deep breath, get out of the chair, think about it, do I really need to respond to this? If you've got a colleague next to you, that can be great. It can be really helpful um, in discussing it with somebody else. Because even if the criticism is unfounded, uh, if we're honest and we want to do a good job, we want to understand why somebody might be criticizing us. So we're quite likely to start kind of, well, start ourselves kind of being, being feeling being pulled into the argument. And so that's the point we have to make a decision as to whether it's worthwhile engaging or not. And just pausing can make a real difference. And to think about having running a kind of another audio track in your head, but your own audio track, a kind of commentary, if you like, on the material that you're reading. So if the comments that you're working through are really negative um, and people are very attacking, it can be very useful to remind yourself of things that, that are really obvious, but you might forget in the moment while under the barrage. So don't hesitate to reaffirm the obvious. So everybody knows that people piling into social media aren't generally representative of the public. But it can be surprisingly easy to lose sight of that when struggling with kind of negative and hostile comments. And so in that case, it can be quite useful to use a technique uh, which I call ghosting, which is just kind of repeating a number of kind of simple messages to yourself. So this is particularly useful if you're a moderator who has to deal with a large volume of negative commentary. So you might say to yourself, this isn't the audience, just some fraction of it. These people don't know me. They're targeting a fantasy projection of me, the journalist. Impugning my motives deprives them of the opportunity of genuine understanding. So the trick is to find a way of depersonalizing it. So it doesn't feel like it's about you as a person. In fact, they don't know who you are, so how can they be attacking you? But rather to think about them um, unloading their anger at a role of you playing the role of the journalist kind of thing. So a sort of identity that's a little bit professional identity that's a little bit separate from your personal identity. That can be very helpful. One thing that moderators do or can do is they're having to read a long um, screed of abusive comments is to build in a little bit of extra distance by subconsciously marking these comments for bad grammar or marking them for unoriginality, maybe give a few extra bonus points to a comment that is genuinely new or even sort of exceptionally devious. So celebrate its brilliance at the same time as pushing it away. There's one thing we can do. Another uh, technique for dealing with this, and particularly if, it's, particularly if you feel very personally attacked, is to imagine in your mind's eye, just kind of close your eyes, and imagine uh, somebody screaming at a, at a model of you or a picture, or a, manne a mannequin or a picture of you, and just enjoy their anger <laughs> as they scream. Um, that's one thing that I've heard people use. Another technique really is, some call it technique, but it's maybe more foundational about that, and that's try to try and cultivate compassion for these hostile voices. Now that might be really weird. Why would I want to be compassionate towards people who are seeking to silence me as a journalist, you know, to pour scorn on my work? Well, the reason why it can be useful is it's another way of building in detachment and distance. It's not about liking the person. It's not about um, wanting anything for yourself from that person. It's just acknowledging that maybe the maybe a human being who's being deliberately abusive out there is somewhat lost, doesn't really have connection to what matters in life, to create a space where you wonder why they need to do this. This can diffuse the, the, the nature of the onslaught. It can reduce or cut the harasser down to size. Sometimes reporters might find themselves in situations in which that they feel that their credibility is being undermined. This can be hard to deal with. You know, how do you respond? Um, it's normally not a good idea to get sucked into an argument with abusive trolls. 
but it could be useful to go onto social media and make some kind of simple corrective points, a few brush off comments, um, refer to people to good resources or to good articles that you've written, whatever it is, but don't get sucked in um, because you're fighting a hopeless battle with somebody who doesn't really care about the truth. If it's starting to get personally invasive, it's a really good idea to remind yourself of where your strengths lie. There's this thing called resourcing. It means um, before engaging with something that's difficult is spending a little while to think about a previous situation in which you did it really well. Um, when did you feel at your best? When did you feel um, that you made a difference? And then after that, engage with the material. Um, there's evidence that this works, so it's worth kind of trying. But I suppose that the most important thing about um, maintaining one's, you know, kind of um, belief in oneself is to is social solidarity. So it's actually it's a collective responsibility that we all have working in the media to reach out and support each other when we become under attack. Mm -hmm.